Hello everybody, welcome back to my movie review series. Today I got one that I actually wanted to watch again. For today we'll be discussing The Day After Tomorrow. One that I've seen many times, but it just popped up on Hulu. It's one of the ones I have like a little list of ones that I wanted to review, so I was happy to see this pop up today as opposed to just picking something random. But, you know how we do it, I'll give you my overall impressions and grade after giving you the logistics of the movie, runtime, anything else that pops up on Google. Then I'll give you my grade. Once that happens, if you've not seen the movie and would like to, based or not based on my recommendation, you're going to want to shut off the video because we'll be discussing the plot, synopsis, and character development, and any similar movies or major themes. So it says here on Google, we have The Day After Tomorrow, PG-13 movie uh, released in 2004. It's an action and science fiction. It says it's a genre that I really enjoy. After climatologist Jack Hall, played by De Dennis Quaid, is largely ignored by UN officials when presenting his environmental concerns, his research proves true when an enormous superstorm develops, setting off, a catastrophic natural setting off catastrophic natural disasters throughout the world. Trying to get to his son, Sam, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, who is trapped in New York with his friend Laura, played by em Emmy Rosam, and others, Jack and his crew must travel by foot from Philadelphia braving the elements to get Sam before it's too late. The $175 million budget to $552 million at the box office. It says 81% liked it on Google, 45% on Rotten Tomatoes, 3.8 out of 5 on Census in Mexico, which that's a, uh, I've been, we've been referencing that grading system quite a bit. It's just always, you pick a different movie, there's always just like some, you know, 6.4 out, out of 10 on IMBD. I just find it funny all of these like little just random grading systems I've never seen, and they're all different on these different movies. So you can watch it now on Hulu. Not sure how long it will be on there. But regardless, what did I think of it? Again, Google says it's intense, disturbing, and bleak. Again, I really like this. Out of all like the, the catastrophe, natural disaster, society falling apart movies, I, I don't know. It, at least, at least in terms of natural disasters, this is probably my favorite one. Um. But I'm gonna go with I'm gonna give it an A minus. I think this is well done. I've seen it a bunch of times, but certainly on the on the first couple watch throughs, I think I just enjoyed watching it again. But I think it's a cool you know survival story along with a nice little cute romance as well. So overall, I think it's well done. I thought the cinematography was was uh, solid, and I thought the acting was solid. No off-putting characterizations, and I just really like the the writing scripts or the you know the the. Uh, imaginative freedom you can have of just you know when society breaks down. So yeah, overall, A minus. I definitely recommend this one if you have not seen it. I think it's fun. I think it's a good survival story and a cute romance. So if you've not seen it, I'm gonna doing the plot synopsis now. So the movie open, opens up and you have Jack Hall, who's a climatologist. He's doing research with two two people, a younger guy named J D. and. Um, some other guy. Um, I forget. It's just probably another minor character. But they're doing, they're taking samples of ice in this Arctic sheet. So big, big, big sheet ice. And then they're drilling a hole and then it cracks and then this drill falls down and there's this big gaping hole, you know, I don't know, a thousand feet down. And, you know, the drill falls, one of the guys almost uh, falls down the hole, they, they catch him. Um, Jack jumps over the crevice to re uh, recover the samples and then jumps back, almost falls down in the hole himself, but rescue, gets rescued by the guys again. And now he's got his research and, you know, there's this big, big opening ice sheet break. So the next kind of thing that happens is you get some background of, I don't think, I think the first thing, next thing I think is there's, he's giving a conference in New Delhi, Jack is, to just the United Nations members about the, his, this uh, change in climate, thinking that there could be, you know, entering another ice age within the next 100 to 1,000 years if we just keep, you know, not... Uh, taking care of the climate. And so um, he gets kind of put off. Definitely the vice president of the United States is, is definitely against him. Some other countries ask him some questions, but the vice president of the United States is just like, you know, this is going to cost too much money. We can't really worry about it as opposed to the economy. And so he gets kind of rejected there. He meets uh, Terry Rapson, who's another researcher who works in Scotland and just kind of like monitors, I don't know, I think the North Atlantic Current. And so they kind of they meet with him for a little bit. You know, they, he meets them in New Delhi. And while they're in New Delhi, it's snowing, which it doesn't normally do. You have another scene where um, they're in Tokyo, and they have 
on like a golf ball or baseball size hails falling down, you know, someone gets hit, hit and killed and, and it's PG-13, it's not like graphic, but you know, imply that someone, you know, gets knocked out or at least killed by these um, giant hailstorms. And so after that, the next thing is you get some kind of like the family relationship. Um, Sam and his marriage to uh, Lucy, who's, who's a medical doctor, um, and Sam's out of the out of the country for months at a time doing his research, and he learns that his son Jack had gotten an F in calculus. And so the next day he's supposed to um, pick up Jack to take him to the airport, and you learn that Jack has um, joined a like a decathlon or just like a you know high school trivia history or high school intellectual club thing. And so um, you learn when Sam or when Jack is talking to his wife, you know she says it thinks it's about a girl, and so you meet there the two. Um, well, I guess first to, to get to the airport the next day, um, Jack is in doing something with the with his uh, climatology work, and then realizes he's about to be late. Goes and rushes to pick up his son who's just about to get into the cab. You know, and asks him like, "Why? Why did you get an F in calculus?" And he's like, "You know, because I didn't write out the solutions." And the teacher said, "If you know, um, if I can't do the answers in my head, then you must be cheating." And then he was like, you know, uh, well, it's not my fault. I'm smarter than you. And his, you know, kind of like the, the smart, smart scene, like establishing that Jack's a smart character uh, scene. And then um, they get to the airport and meet the other two um, decathlon members, Laura Chapman, the girl that Jack is definitely crushing hard on, who's definitely cutie. Um, and I think J I think uh, Simon is the other is the other person on their team. And so they fly on the plane, and he goes through some um, turbulence. Um, Jack's pretty scared of flying, um, and Sam or, and Simon's like, you know, there's one in a billion or one in a million chance of going down, kind of like messing with them, but they make it through the turbulence, and then they land in New York. And so during that time, uh, what happens next? Again, I'm going to be missing, this, missing the scene order quite a bit. But anyway, um, the uh, you, Dr. Lucy, she's her like main characterization is she's taking care of this uh, sick person with a, a young child with cancer. His name's Peter, and she's you know just reading him books and doing her job as well. And so, I guess kind of the next thing that happens is um, Los Angeles, kind of the first big after like the Tokyo scenes, the first big like. Uh, thing that starts to happen with the weather is Los Angeles gets hit with a ton a ton of um, super super tornadoes and so there's like five or six tornadoes you know big scene more chaos one of the news reporter gets hit by a big sign um, the dude running the weather forecast is you know about to hook up with his girlfriend or wife when this starts happening and then you know the janitor's doing his job and these big Super twisters go through everything, and the janitor goes to open the door, and he opens it up, and, and the building's like ripped in half, and you're seeing like the outside. And so that's kind of like the first big um, weather thing that occurs, um, as well as again Terry Rapson's working in, in Scotland with a couple other a uh, couple other people, and that might be Simon again. This the cast list is 20 years old now, so it's kind of hard to match the characters to the people every single time. But. Um, Regardless, I don't know when I whenever I click back in the cast list to overview on my phone, it goes it goes into Spanish, which I don't know why it's doing that, but whatever. <laughs> so uh, regardless, um, now um, uh, they give you know the president gives another briefing or another talk or the vice president hears about you know these big twisters in um, in Los Angeles. Um, there's another scene where Sam and uh, one of his his boss tries to track down the vice president. The vice president blows him off once again. Um, but now they kind of have um, a big a big conference with FEMA and NASA to see you know what's what's going on with this and that. And they're not really sure. You know, the solar output's the same. And Terry Rapson had called Sam Hall, and like they had like three different buoys, like research buoys, like malfunction or show temperature drops that are just unheard of in the you know northern northern seas. And so um, Jack steps up and is like, you know, what if it's the North Atlantic Current? And, you know, basically he thinks that they're, they're reaching desalinization point where all of this uh, melting ice is uh, making the, the currents um, not no, abnormal and driving all of this abnormal weather. And so 
they have that um, and then basically he needs some he needs some processing power to run his model because he's, he's basically running it off of like you know data from the last ice age and so he gets some help from Janet Tokata and you know his team and people on Jack's team that really likes Janet and so there's a couple scenes like that but they basically they run the model and then they show it and then they present to the you know, vice president again and he's just st still not kind of having it. So at this time back in New York, Jack and them, um, there's, there's, it's raining really bad everywhere too. So there's after the, oh, a couple of airplanes do go down because of turbulence and so all, all flights are canceled and then it starts raining really heavy so the subway gets flooded so that gets canceled. But basically Sam or Jack tells Sam that he has to, you know, come back home and I think they're living like DC, DC, New York type of commute, um, or at least distance. And so, but now they're completely out of options of where to go. When they land in New York, you meet another character, again, couldn't match him to the cast list, but just a member from one of the other decathlon teams, super rich dude. You know, they go to his apartment once it starts raining, um, and then they leave to go, like, they have to go pick up his brother or go do something. Um, and it's not, the weather's not super bad yet, but they go outside and everything's really starting to flood. And so things start to flood real bad to the point where it's like, you know, waist deep in the, in the, in the middle of the street. And there's this big tsunami like thing and it flood New York. And so um, they're, not, they're not sure if they should stay at the apartment or go somewhere else. And, it, you know, even as a watcher, I was like confused as to why they wouldn't stay in the apartment as well, like the first couple times. But I guess just the, the library, the New York library is a, a higher elevation than the apartment overall. And so regardless, they really start to flood. Um, this uh, French couple or French daughter and mother gets caught in a car. Laura goes back to help them, gets them out of the car, right as you know, this big wave of water's coming. J uh, Sam sees the big wave of water and you know, rushes to get Laura. And Laura, as she's going to help these French people, she cuts her leg on this like trailer hitch of a car. And so they get the people out of the car, get the bag, you know, that had their like, passports that she went back for. But they, they make it into the upper levels of the um, library and this big flood comes and wa washes out the streets of New York. And so now they're in there, um, back at the, pro the processing center, um, Jack runs his data on, um, he gets, well, Terry, Terry Rapson sends him some data from these buoys and then he, he runs them on his model and pulls up this big thing and, and um, he's like, you know, this is going to happen in seven to ten days. And so basically what's going to happen is there's just going to be this big storm um, and it's going to pull down air from the troposphere and it freezes stuff really, really fast. Because you get more information um, that three helicopters, and there's a scene about it too, that, that three helicopters, you know, freeze midair um, from, from the coldness of the, um, of just, of the temperature decrease. So it freezes the fuel lines at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and crashes these three helicopters. And so now uh, Jack is um, briefing directly to the president, and the president, this one's President Blake, and he, you know, basically says we need to evacuate everyone under, you know, in the southern ha half of the United States. And people in the northern half of the United States, it's pretty much too late. So obviously the VP is still pushing back. He's like, you know, it's easy for him to say um, after he leaves the room and his boss is still in, in the room. Um, it's like easy for him to say while he's safely here in D.C. And in the, uh, his boss is to the vice president is like, you know, his son is in New York. And so he, you, have, you have a scene where Jack and Sam, they do... Uh, because now all the power is going out, it's hard to get a cell signal. But Sam is able to uh, contact Jack, or Jack, yeah, Sam is able to call Jack from like a, a manual payphone that's still working. He almost floods under the water, you know, it's at the lower level of the library, and everything's still liquid right now. And so he barely makes it out of there, but the water's very cold. And so at which point Laura, Laura uses her body heat to help warm him up, and then he's definitely liking that scene. And so. He, get, he makes contact with Jack, who basically says, you know, stay inside, burning anything you can. The storm's moving way too fast. If you go outside, you're going to die. And so the, the water ends up freezing over. They hear this big ship kind of like crunching through the streets, you know, just kind of like aimlessly floating. Um, and 
then you, you see a bunch of people walking on the snow. And so all of the people in the hallway or in the, in the library pretty much decide, besides like you know, a handful of people, with Jack and his crew, uh, or Sam and his cr friends, Sam, Laura, Simon, and it might not be Simon, I can't remember if it's the right dude, but the, the, the guy from the other team that's been helpful um, with, with the apartment and whatnot, and, uh, and a couple other people, some of the librarians decide to stay with, um, with, with Sam and the rest. So everybody else goes trekking out into the snow, and it's the, they're at, at vulnerability for the temperature drop. And so that, uh, and Jack just tells Sam that he's going to come get him. And so Jack has his, his crew that was with him at the beginning, JD and um, one other guy, and they kind of they drive in a car and have a bunch of snow gear to go try to find him. And so, you know, at this point they're starting to evacuate everybody. Um, again, Dr. Lucy, she is with this Peter, uh, pediatric cancer patient and waiting for a, an ambulance to arrive. Um, and then all the chaos and all the you know, destruction, they kind of just all left and kind of, kind of abandoned her. And so she decides to stay back and hopefully wait for somebody to show up to save Peter as well. And so they do that. Um, and then the next thing that kind of happens is um, when, because Laura had cut her leg on the, they start burning books, you know, they find an old fireplace, they get some snacks from the uh, vending machines, they don't have much food, but Laura starts to, you know, deteriorate. One, one of the mornings she wakes up and she's like, has a very cold fever and she's clearly sick. And so they realize that, um, that the, the, the cut on her leg has been massively infected. And so she needs some penicillin to f fix that. And so, um, Sam, all, all three of the, the guys go out to, um, to the ship where the, the ship that had crunched through and stopped to try to find penicillin on the ship. So they go on there, as, and a, as well as a pack of wolves. Some of their minor scenes in the beginning of the movie where there's, you know, an animal sanctuary, and they go in there and the wolves have escaped, and now the wolves are, you know, looking for food themselves. So they go to the ship, and a pack of wolves doesn't really follow them, but goes onto the ship at the same kind of time. And so they get on there, they find the penicillin, they find a mess hall with some food, and at which point the, they, the wolves are in there. And so the, the wolves attack, they kind of like shut the door on one, but one of the dudes, the, the guy from the other decathlon team, the rich dude with the, um, uh, that let him at their apartment for a little bit, um, he gets bit in the leg. And so, and now they can see that, and they, they, they fight off the wolves for a little bit, but they, they escape out of that. And they notice that the, the temperature, they're, they're in the eye of the storm and the, the cold is, is gonna come down really extremely quick. And so they, they rush back into the um, library, you know, trying to bring as many supplies as they can and burning books as fast as they can. You know, they rush in there as the, the frostbite is like breaking stuff down and then they close the doors and they can just keep the books burning as much as possible. Um, back with Jack and his crew, um, they're, they're going over this, you know, they're walking on ice, but they can't see what's underneath them. And, and you know, they're walking on 15 feet things buried and bigger. And so they're walking on this ice sheet of like a mall and the ice cracks and they have like a, you know, like a, like a snow line where it's like they're tied to each other so they don't, they don't lose one another and tied to the gear that they're pulling behind them. And so the gear falls down, one of the dudes falls down, um, Jack and, the, and JD are on top of the ice or on top of the glass. Um, the dude cuts off the um, supplies and they're gonna try to try to rescue him and the glass starts to break too much and the one dude's hands bleeding trying to hold him up. Um, so the dude makes the executive decision to sacrifice himself for the group, cuts the cord and falls down. Again, PG-13, nothing graphic, but you know, assume he breaks his back or just dies from his injuries of the impact. And so now Jack has lost one of his members of his crew, but they continue on. The other guy, um, JD, kind of gets tired or, you know, collapses. And so Jack starts pulling him along as well. And so when the, when the frostbite comes at Jack's level, um, the... Um, he like throws the dude into a Wendy's, you know, like cooking room or like uh, kitchen and you know, light, lights all the burners, you know, to keep them alive while the fry spit comes. And so the, the eye of the storm passes and the dude wakes up and it's like, you know, let's continue on and, fi and, fi and finish trying to find uh, Sam. And so they do that. The rest of the country is being evacuated in Mexico. Mexico agrees to open the borders. 
um, in, in exchange for debt relief. And finally, also, someone comes for Dr. Lucy and Peter as well with an ambulance. And so that's all kind of going on. Um, Terry Rapson, after, even before this, Terry Rapson and his crew in Scotland, they're way too far north, and so they've been snowed in. And so after, after he sends the data over to uh, Jack before his trip, he's like, you know, the time for, for me to escape has come and gone. And so Terry Rapson, you know, and his crew, there's like, there's two of them, you know, they, they drink some, some liquor, you know, reminisce about not being able to see their kids grow up or whatever. Um, and so the, the, the Scotland crew is now, is, is off the map now too. And so basically the, the eye of the storm passes and JD and Jack make it on top of the library and it's like the library should be right here and it's almost completely snowed in but they can kind of like climb into it and so they do that and then they find the, the entire crew that stayed in the library alive and well after passing by like some of the there was like a police officer that was a minor character that you like see him frozen over as well and so that's what happens they um the storm starts to recede um, there's some other uh, minor scenes with the astronauts in, in space looking down at the, you know, the cloud formations of these big storms. So they start to see land mass and the, and the storms finally starting to recede. And so they make it back out, uh, like Sam, Jack, and all of them, they start to start walking back on the snow to get rescued. Um, the president, his, his motorcade got, uh, he, it's not really sure why, but he stays back for a while in Washington and his motorcade uh, gets caught up in the storm and he does not make it either. So the vice president becomes the president um, and he gives like a final like, address from an embassy or consulate in Mexico, you know, just some minor comments about, you know, climate change as well as, you know, uh, immigration being, you know, when the United States have mass immigration to Mexico to avoid the storm, you know, just commentary on social issues. And so they get rescued um, and, and, I guess there's a, there's a cute scene before well, once um, before they go and get the penicillin or before Laura starts to show extreme uh, deterioration, where J uh, Sam tells her that he joined the decathlon just to meet her, to be around her, and they have a nice little kiss. And then as they're flying back after getting rescued, she kind of like puts her her head on his shoulder. So I thought the romance in this one was cute, especially even with the. When they first meet the guy from the other decathlon team, it's kind of like, you know, play like maybe Laura likes him, but then the other dude's really cool. So it was like, I don't know, I thought that, I thought the romance in this one was fun and cute. Um, but the VP gives one final address, like, you know, we should be more, I was wrong, we need to be more responsive to our climate and, you know, work together as a species. So overall, I found it entertaining. And then I guess the, I guess the final thing is they show a lot of people being rescued, just like other survivors on the top of the skyscrapers in New York being picked up, and there was other, just other people who survived. And so that's the resolution of the movie. It has a survival, society breaks down, cute romance. I thought, I thought it was well done, and I've seen it a bunch of times, so still in the A- minus range for me. So overall, this is definitely what I recommended, and I think it was a fun, cute movie. So thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one, if there is one.